diamonds are found in the mountains of Africa. Of Africa. In you know, various places such as that. You know, but when they're found, they're found with dirt on Okay. However, they're diamonds. I've been doing this for 50 years. Because I'm 50 and I was born doing it. You know, and um, I don't know, my mom said I cried on heat. Because she's a singer. She was a singer. Bless her soul. Bless her soul. Yes. But you guys have something very special. But everybody got to stay on one accord. And everybody got to listen. Um, when wisdom speaks. When wisdom speaks. You know, and not just listen, but obey. You understand me? It's going to be a lot of obstacles. It's going to be a lot of things, roadblocks and all that stuff. And cliffs coming your way. There is a certain thing that, that you have. You have a gift. You know, and some people are talented and some people are gifted. And, you know, uh, the gift is, of course, where it's at. Because when you're gifted, you have gifts come with spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have spiritual discernment, you're able to channel your gift into whatever your problems are. So, I know individually and collectively, you guys go through stuff. Y'all go through, you know, uh, problems. But depending on how you handle that, because that's a great thing for you, if you handle it right, it will eventually shine the light on the measure. Okay. All right. So someone sent that to me. They wanted me to do a review on it. So I'm doing a review. Okay. So this sounds like the beginning part of grooming, you know, and, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I would need to hear more, but, you know, he's talking about listening and obeying and, you know, and I'm sure he's going to take a look around the room and see who's paying attention. You know, as, as you all know, I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist. I know I bring that up a lot, but I think that it has a, I think it has a lot to do with it. You know, as a certified clinical hypnotherapist, uh, and the rigorous training that I went through to become a a certified clinical hypnotherapist, you know, there were a lot of things that we learned about behaviorism and the altering of human behavior, not just temporarily, but for good. You know, um, and then speaking of for good, these these gifts can be used for good or they can be used for other reasons which are not so wholesome. And there are a lot of people that engage in the art of behaviorism, of the art of altering human behavior. And one of the things that you'll see, ugh, especially in a clip like this, you listen to it and he's going on a monologue and he's saying a lot of words that people may or may not understand or then he'll say certain things louder. You have to listen. You have to obey. <laughs> You know, and another thing that I will say, um, when I was going through my training, part of learning about the difference between just regular hypnosis and hypnotherapy is that the hypnotherapy is hypnosis for therapeutic effect. Now, there are people who use hypnosis for stage shows and for for um, for showman showman showmanship and showmanness, where they'll bring people up on the stage and make them bark or quack or whatever. You know, when a hypno, when a hyp, when a hypnotist is looking in the crowd, like how you see he's surrounded by different people, you can see the people who are in the crowd who look like they're more susceptible to your message. So you give a speech like this to 10, 14 different girls or whomever, and maybe one or two of them you'll see that all of the words and all of the that they're just already just like really really suggestible to what it is that you're saying you know so this right here i think is a very interesting look into the behind the scenes of how a person uses their their words and their power and their command in order to be able to manipulate people not for the greater good you know um i'll say this and then we're gonna and then we'll, we'll jump out of here men who are successful pimps also have this ability of of manipulation of altering a person's behavior 
talking and saying things in just the right way and finding those who are more open to the message than others. Like everybody is not going to be open to it, but you don't need everybody to. You know, if you're talking to 20 people and one of them is interested, that's that's one right there. Then you talk to another group of 20. If you get one, then that's then you have two. Another group of 20, if you get one. So it's like not like some people are like, oh, I wouldn't fall for it. Right. You don't have to, but somebody will. You know, there will be somebody who is just prime and ready enough to come up on the stage and, and make a fool of themselves, quack like a duck or do what it is that he would want them to do. And it's like you can talk with people and you can kind of get a sense for who's going to be more pliable. Remember in the last video we talked about the the weakest link, the one that's falling behind the fray, the one who's not as strong or not as capable, you know, a person who doesn't, or, or a species, an animal, anything that just doesn't have enough ability enough prowess to be able to handle what it is that you're bringing at them and on that note i want to hear your thoughts on this did this sound like grooming did it sound like just a pep talk were you able to pick up on the arbitals in there and you know on my show arbitals are rbtl reading between the lines were you able to pick up on some of those so listen on that note i'm going to jump out of here i thought that this whole new r kelly segment coming up in the in the news is really interesting you know this makes us take a step back and take a larger look at what does it mean to what does it mean to really manipulate a person what does it mean to brainwash a person and does the person know that they are brainwashed oh <sighs> And the craziest part about it, I, I, first of all, I think that this is, I think this is fascinating. I think this is a fascinating display of, gosh, whew, I don't want to say mind control. I don't want to say mind control because that sounds so ominous, you know, like, um, and conspiracy theorist thing. But as a, as, as a, as a, as a hypnotherapist, right? It's amazing to be able to see in real life, in real time, a person who is sleeping awake. They're awake, but there are parts of them that are asleep and they believe that they're fully conscious and they're talking. And you know what? And I'm referring really more so to the last video that we just saw with Jocelyn Savage and Azriel where they're defending R. Kelly. And they, in their minds, and they really, really, really truly believe what it is that they're saying they really really truly believe it and they can't see the the cracks and the fault and judgment you know and it's like it takes it's like when you're in the program you don't know you're in the program it's like being in the matrix you have to unplug from it and step back to be able to see that there is a program running otherwise we just run the program and you know what and i think that this is an extreme example extreme case However, there are so many of us, actually all of us, have different programs that are just running under the scene, programs running, scripts that are running, that we don't know. I mean, there are so many of us who stay in the same income bracket, the same weight bracket, stay in similar types of relationships, continue to meet people who, are, who exhibit similar characteristics. What's going on? Well, why does this keep happening? Why do we seem to be on this perpetual hamster wheel? And so I think it's easy for us to sit back on the outside and be like, oh, well, that's them. But I'm saying, as a trained professional, it's all of us. All of us have these scripts, but we can't see the script. So it's like we can look from the eye. Like there's a person who has broken out of the rat race to become a millionaire. And they can look back and they can see you in the rat race and they can say, you know what? I, I remember when I was in that space. And I think that's why so many of us are drawn to these these millionaire mindset people with the messages of how they broke free because it gives us the idea and the indication that there is a way to break free. And look, this person has done it, you know? And so it's like we continue, even though we know, oh, it, it they they can get out. We, they can get out. There's still parts of us 
that continue to just do the same scripts, same scripts, feel the same emotions day in and day out, finding different ways to replicate the same emotions in different situations, meeting people and, and the same things keep coming up, same thing until they're addressed and healed. And it's, this is just, I, I find this whole thing fascinating. But look, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Tanya TKO and I'm out. Go out there and love one another. But most importantly, what? Love yourself. And part of loving yourself is to take a look at your patterns. Take a look at your patterns. What am I doing and feeling over and over again? What are the, the things that I keep saying over and over again? Taking a look at your patterns and taking a look at... I want to I want to talk I want I want to make this this message specific to this video. And so part of loving yourself is when you hear a person who is going off on like this monologue or trying to overtalk you or talk you until you you're you're weak and tired of hearing it. You know, just kind of remember this one this conversation that we had and just kind of take a step back and be like, you know, What's the bigger picture? What's going on here? What programs are, are running over and over again without interruption? And what can I do to pattern interrupt? All right. So on that note, I'm out of here. Tanya TKO. Peace.